Hello and welcome to the video. This is my video on EdgeTX. You've probably seen lots of other videos, maybe if you're a regular YouTube viewer, from other channels. And I've been holding off until EdgeTX came out with a more complete version. What do I mean by that? Well, now EdgeTX is available as a firmware you can flash onto your OpenTX powered radio and replace it with EdgeTX. But they've also added the companion software, that piece of software that lives on your computer that's great for setting up models, copying things to your radio, backing it up, applying firmware, all that goodness. Now that version of EdgeTX is called 2.5 and it's been out long enough and I've been playing with it here. So I thought it's high time that I talked about HTX, and this is really aimed at those of you that haven't watched a lot of those other videos, because I'm going to talk about what HTX is, and also what I think it should be, rather than what it is at the moment in this early incarnation. Now I need to say a massive thank you to the developers behind mm -hmm. projects like HTX, because there's an awful lot of technology that we rely on in the hobby that is shareware, available to download and just use without paying anybody anything. Uh, CleanFlight, Betaflight, iNav, uh, all of these other projects like Ardu Pilot, even things like the on-screen display stuff, loads and loads of things, even things like head tracker software. We can all get hold of it now, and with the hardware to go with it, we can do some pretty incredible stuff. I, again, would recommend if you're ever using a project and there is a little donate button, if you're using the technology and you're getting advantages out of it or you're enjoying using it, stick them a couple of bucks through the donate button. It makes all the difference to the developers. So let's talk about HTX. But it's kind of difficult to talk about HTX without talking about what it's there building upon. OpenTX has been around for a very long time. I have literally hundreds of videos on OpenTX. It's an incredibly powerful operating system for radios like this TX16S, but it's been around for quite a long time. I got my first OpenTX powered radio about uh, just over seven years ago, my original Tiranis from FreeSky, and almost all of the other radios that have been coming out, everyone kind of jumped on the OpenTX bandwagon. That incredible, powerful operating system means that you can make an OpenTX radio do pretty much anything. And with the ability to support programming language called Lua, you can also have it run little programs to either show screens of telemetry or to actually program specific things to happen on your model when specific things happen with telemetry. But the OpenTX project and the OpenTX operating system is far from perfect. Unfortunately, OpenTX, because of that complexity, is incredibly difficult to get your head around. And that's been great for all of my OpenTX videos, because I have a little series that talks about how to get to grips with OpenTX aimed at new pilots. And those videos are still getting lots of views. But in my humble opinion, it shouldn't take you watching 20 YouTube videos in order to be able to use the radio's basic functionality. The interface is overwhelming for many, and unless your brain works in the same way as the developers, navigating your way around can be really tricky. A lot of times I'll go to the field to fly, and one of my friends will sidle up with his radio and just ask me to sort something or change something or fix something on a model with his. And with things like my Patreons, I regularly get um, model memories from them where they've set things up as well, where maybe something isn't working in exactly the same way. And there are some kind of bugs and tweaks and weird ones in fact, one of the recent ones I had was a Patreon sent me a model memory where the slow function for something like uh, retract wasn't working uh, on anything but the first flick. So OpenTX definitely needs some bug sorting out and it also needs a slew of improvements as well. And the project itself has kind of stalled. Now, let's talk about how these projects work. And you can probably think of uh, lots of different projects and kind of insert your own name. But it's very, very much a cycle. In the initial phases of a project, there is lots of enthusiasm, lots and lots of very clever developers get in there and they're creating something almost from nothing. Think of things like the ELRS project that's currently going on at the moment. Another project that they use the technology essentially for free. That initial phase is powered by that kind of energy, enthusiasm, and passion. But the problem is, is that kind of energy can't last forever. What happens over time is you get into that middle phase as the product starts to mature, as things 
are kind of achieved and you're starting to do all of the big stuff that you wanted to do, tick them off the list, the developers start working on more and more little bits of the things that they're trying to trying to sort out and there's always another more exciting fun project for the developers to move on to unless they're really passionate about that particular project and it starts to lose a, a little bit of the talent that was there in that initial fun phase where everybody was working incredibly hard where a lot of these projects start to get into trouble is that maintenance phase as i call it this is where it starts to become like a job. So this is code maintenance, bug fixing, documentation update and maintenance. It's just real laborious hard work and nobody likes doing that. Well, actually that's not true. Some people like doing it, but the vast majority of developers that I know hate that kind of stuff. And that's part of the reason why these days things like the iNow 3.0 uh, code, the documentation is still nowhere near up to date, even though 3.0 has been out for a while because updating the code and the documentation for the code is really, really hard work and very laborious and just isn't fun for lots of people. Now, there are projects that you can think about that are in various stages. So, for example, I would say the ELRS project at the moment is right in that initial phase where it's all very fun and exciting and there's loads of talent in it. At the other end of the spectrum, you've got things like the beta flight project where we haven't had a beta flight release for ages. Is that because the beta flight project is perfect? Nope. But is it stalling and slowing down? Yeah, and that's because it's on the other side of that curve. There are always new, sexier, more interesting projects around. And part of the issue is that OpenTX has also gone through that cycle and is very firmly stuck in that maintenance phase where it's the boring, crappy parts of the job that the remaining developers on the project are just having to slog through. But... It's not just about that with OpenTX as well. OpenTX has had a very symbiotic relationship in the past with people like FreeSky. When FreeSky first brought out that initial Tyrannus X9D, they caught lightning in a bottle. Combined with the OpenTX operating system, they provided an incredible radio for a fraction of the price of the other systems that were available on the market. And myself included, just fell in love with the whole thing, the way that telemetry worked. Developers of things like Clean Flight, then Beta Flight and iNav kind of got behind the telemetry system so you could have that all going back to your radio from your flight controller and the whole ecosystem built up. And OpenTX as a project was very much had their wagon hitched to that wagon train with FreeSky and unfortunately, as FreeSky started to lose the plot and become part of a problem for the hobby rather than part of a solution, OpenTX got kind of dragged in that direction as well. And eventually they cut some of those very symbiotic ties with FreeSky. But in my opinion, a lot of the damage had already been done. So lots of people saw the need to bring out a new improved version of OpenTX that didn't have all of that legacy stuff and where it was a new project so it's kind of starting at that exciting fun phase again while lots of the talent can come in and produce some really exciting stuff and there's lots of things been on the OpenTX development list for at this point years that still haven't been implemented things like touchscreen interface stuff and while it talks about the fact that the idea is with EdgeTX is the EdgeTX project can develop this technology and it can be pushed back into OpenTX, that may happen. But in reality, I see a lot of times where a project will be forked, sounds rude, but it's not be copied, so that another set of developers can develop the code in their own particular way of interest. Think about things like Clean Flight and iNav. The initial idea was that iNav some of the stuff in iNav was be able to come back into clean flight, particularly on the GPS code. And that never happened because the changes in iNav became so fundamental is that it became a completely different animal. And that could very much happen to EdgeTX as well, which means some of the goodness developed in EdgeTX is going to be completely separate and distinct from the parent OpenTX project. Now, I've heard lots of horror stories myself about the OpenTX project. I haven't had a lot of interaction with them, despite being one of the people creating literally dozens and dozens of video and library and library and library on how to do stuff with the radios they've never ever bothered to reach out to me and that could be seen as a level of arrogance 
but that combined with the slow development, lack of innovation, not giving us what we want as pilots, asking for lots of cash for people to make changes and to implement stuff, which in my humble opinion is always a sign of something going wrong when that kind of commercialism comes in to a project in an unstructured way, and then not supporting newer radios, HTX was almost inevitable. However, it's interesting. There are still names out there that are big OpenTX fans, like Team Black Sheep, TBS. So with all that said, let's talk about what EdgeTX actually is. It's a version with OpenTX that's been forked or copied from the original project and all of the stuff that the developers want is now happening in here away from the OpenTX project. Some of the headline stuff is obviously the touchscreen interface. And despite it being version 2.5, in my humble opinion, it feels very, very unfinished. There's lots of things that can definitely be improved, but it's nice to see some new features coming into the operating system for these kind of radios. How easy is it to get on the radio? I'm not going to go through that in this video. Loads of other people have done it, but... It, you can copy it onto the radio using the existing OpenTX companion. You can put it on the SD card, although when I tried that, it really struggled to do it. And once it's on the radio, then it will convert everything across. The big tip, of course, is before you do any of this, back up your OpenTX radio, back up, back up your EEPROM, back up your SD card. The process to update it is a little clunky still at the moment, and that just speaks to the relatively immature nature of the project. It's still pretty early days. So should you download it and have a go? Well, I know lots of pilots who have downloaded it and are flying on it and having the minimum of problems, which is a great indication that the changes that have been made to the OpenTX base code isn't affecting the reliability of it. But personally, I wouldn't use it here until there's another couple of versions out and some of the things that I think are a little bit clunky uh, start to be implemented and we start to get a little bit of finesse in some of the things in it as well. Now I've got it on this radio here and I'm using it and playing with it to evaluate it and there's lots of cool features. So examples of the things that I've noticed, uh, the touch screen interface is very basic and the interface isn't optimized for touch screen devices. It's just basically the OpenTX layout with the touch enabled on the top. So for example, if you go into the curve screen, you can't click on and drag the curve points. You have to still go and select them and then use the buttons to change the values. There's only a spectrum analyzer in the first screen. There's no crossfire or other stuff. Things like there's no previews of the model images for when you look at them inside the widget or inside the model setup itself. Having those kind of things is expected with modern GUI interfaces. The updating process is very clunky and the copying of files is fine for those of you who have already be happy with OpenTX cut and paste and renaming of files and things. But for those pilots where they're not completely familiar or comfortable with that, it's going to be a very tricky thing to do. It is OpenTX in a flashy suit at the moment with a nice few welcome changes but it's an evolution of OpenTX when it could have been a revolution. There is an opportunity with these modern radios with their faster processes, more memory, graphical screens, touchscreen interfaces to create something that might have the OpenTX engine at the back, but that is completely different at the front and addresses a lot of the problems that pilots have coming to the OpenTX system for the first time. The widgets in OpenTX have been terrible for ages. So the simple creation of a model isn't great. So if you create a multi-rotor model, it doesn't by default give things like an arm, a mode, a beeper switch, and those kind of things. But also, if you want to do some nice stuff, like maybe you have a slope saw or something else, and you want to add mixes for some of the stuff like Crow and Reflex, that stuff should be available really easily. Some of the proprietary manufacturers, people like Spectrum, Fataba and Jetty and others, have that ability built into the radios. And having a touchscreen interface with a beautiful big color screen and the ability to run Lua scripts, this could be a really, really simple, easy to use interface. OpenTX burnt a lot of the goodwill they created and caused 
enough of a rift to force this new version of OpenTX to be created. Although the copy on the website talks about some of the things being merged back to OpenTX, as I said at the beginning, that often doesn't happen. Look at the clean flight with Betaflight and iNav. There are lots of things that need addressing in OpenTX still as it stands today. The user interface is too complex for many. Easier model creation and sharing is needed. A simple mode for the interface would lower the point of entry. Easier setup of things like Crow, Reflex and other advanced mixes for fixed wing pilots should be simple to set up and add. Basic model setups for Betaflight, iNav, Vardu Pilot would be great. More use of the Lua system with colour and touch to automate a lot of things that the casual user struggles with. Better documentation, easier updating of the firmware and automatic backups are all things that should be part of EdgeTX. We're going to do it. Graphical user interfaces are notorious to get right, but there are lots of GUIs that pilots are familiar with and use on a daily basis. Things like Apple iOS, Android, Windows, and even the infotainment and sat-nav system in a modern car have put a lot of thought and effort into how you navigate using both touch and the buttons, the discrete buttons available. If a two-year-old can handle a GUI, then it's probably user-friendly, and that's the level I think part of the HTX system would benefit from focusing on, lowering that point of entry to make it easy for a brand new pilot to get into HTX and then to be able to later kind of get under that nice, easy-to-use interface into the weeds if they want to do some really cool automated advanced stuff. The trick is making it easier for the new pilot and user and making it a learning curve and providing access to the more sophisticated parts. Sadly, I can't see any of that in the current version and nothing about that stuff on the roadmap. To be fair, it is very early days of the project, so the team are finding their feet and gaining momentum. There are some um, multi-rotor and fixed-wing pilots in the group of developers, so it should be interesting to see how that works out. A lot of the things that have been added are things that have been discussed as things coming to OpenTX, like touchscreen support, so the HTX project isn't doing anything groundbreaking yet. It's nice to see these new features coming out for an OpenTX powered radio, but I hope they don't just work on the outstanding list of things we should have had in OpenTX in the recent past, but put more effort into the usability and giving us that revolution rather than just an evolution of a OpenTX project that lost a little bit of focus and momentum. I'm going to keep downloading and testing it on this radio here. This is my dedicated Edge TX radio. And as they bring out new versions with key stuff, I'll keep you up to date with what's going on. I've still got my fingers crossed that Edge TX gives us the revolution and not just continues with a basic evolution. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.